Ladies and gentlemen, now I am used to being behind the camera, so you'll have to excuse me for my nervousness, but I am happy to say that the session of Argo only had six people in it, and I think we've got about 300 people here tonight, so we've, we've done well. However, Twilight is coming out tonight. I think they might be, so I'm not sure. So. Okay, so welcome to the world premiere of our film, Once Upon a Mountain, a film about hope for maltreated children. And one such treatment family that has given hope to literally thousands of, of children, severely traumatised children, um, over the past 30 years, the Jasper Mountain Centre. My name is Ruben Street, I'm the director, co-writer and co-producer of this film, the film that we're about to play. Um, I'd like to thank you all for supporting this event, and in particular the following people for their attendance tonight. Um, the Right Honourable Labor Member for Parliament, Kelvin Thompson, um, our State Commissioner, Bernie Geary, representatives from the Australian Federal Police and Victoria Police, um, and uh, representatives from the local government and from state government. We've got John Kavanagh, um, Michael Teddy, representatives from the Department of Human Services and the Department of Education. Um, and all the people present from the many organisations that help maltreated children on a daily basis. Thank you. I'd like to now welcome uh, to the microphone Commissioner Bernie Geary, who's going to say a few words. Thanks, Ruben. This is actually my local theatre, and um, Sometimes my wife and I just come down here and see what movie's on, and we go to them. I just wonder how many people who just came down today and thought, we'll go to the movies, and here we are. <laughs> anyway, if you did, you're in for a great show. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the original and real owners of the land, the Wurundjeri people, um, past and present. And uh, I'd like to thank um, you all for coming tonight. Thank you, uh, David Ziegler, and your equal partner, Joyce and uh, Blueprint Studios for inviting me to say a few words in advance for this much anticipated documentary. Uh, as mentioned, I'm the Child Safety Commissioner in Victoria, and I'm not primarily the Commissioner for agencies, workers, or specific models of practice, but for children, particularly the most vulnerable and tra traumatised children in our community. I'm under no illusion that to bring healing and hope to these children and their families is complex, painstaking, and long-term. It's definitely harder than rocket science. Despite our growing knowledge and familiarity about the critical impact of trauma attachment in the happiness and life chances of children, uh, this is only a beginning. The wisdom has to be then interpreted into approaches and strategies that, I repeat, can bring a process of healing and real hope for the right of a happy and constructive life. We're all responsible then to keep leaving no st stone unturned in determining the best state of the art models and practices that can be adapted to achieve the best outcomes for the individual child. We now frequently use the word therapeutic care, and here in Victoria, I'm afraid, the term is becoming bastardised. But therapeutic care is not something static. It needs to be continually refined and adapted with knowledge and evidence. The only real test for effectiveness is developed and happiness Develop, development and happiness outcomes, outcomes that are measurable and evident, outcomes that hit you right in the face. An evening like tonight continues to raise the bar on expectations of the kind of care and services that need to be in place for the most traumatised children in our communities. I hope we're all personally and systemically challenged in different ways this evening as to how we're tracking in Victoria. Thanks, David Ziegler, and your team for your, generous, for your generosity and willingness to share your work to assist in challenging us to keep improving and adapting at what we can offer these children. And thanks also to Greg, who I have to call Gregory, but I knew him a long time ago and he was Greg then, but anyway. <laughs> thanks also to Greg, Gregory Nicolau, who, who is uh, a gem in the rough, and indeed everyone in the room for your persistence and doggedness in wanting to keep improving our work with these precious children. We also need each other to build our hope that we can make a difference to damaged and hurting children. I reckon the kernel test of any therapeutic approach with all its clinical and related practices is how well it prepares, tests, 
and supports understandably mistrusting children to build confidence and practice to explore and build wholesome relationships and broader community connections. Ultimately, the real test of all of our professional and caring efforts is how well these children take their place in the ordinariness of day-to-day -day life in their communities long after professional associations have closed. Thank you, and I look forward to learning tonight and enjoying. Thank you very much. Okay, just firstly I'd like to thank Commissioner Bergeri, thank you very much for that, and um, I want to give you guys a brief overview on how this film came about. Um, I first met Dave and Joy Sigler and Judy Littlebury, um, the three founders of the Jasper Mountain Centre, whilst filming an event for the Australian Childhood Trauma Group, thanks Gregory, uh, where Dave was the keynote speaker. Having a background in psychology, and in particular behaviour intervention, and previously working for NGOs in the Department of Human Services, I found myself listening, listening more intently to what was being said than I usually would, uh, and concentrating on my camera a little less than I should. Um, the Jasper Mountain Centre approach intrigued me, uh, and after about three days of filming Dave speak about their philosophies, I asked him if, it would be, if he'd be happy to let three Aussie blokes come and stay with him at the Jasper Mountain Centre in Oregon, USA, to make a documentary. He accepted immediately. Um, I'm not sure if that's because I'm six foot five and he might have been scared of saying no, uh, but I prefer to think that it was due to the connection that we'd made through our brief conversations uh, throughout those three days of filming and seminars. In 2009, a film crew consisting of myself and two of my closest friends, John D. Flamery and Elio Rulli, headed for the mountains of Oregon to Jasper Mountain Centre. We were all unsure of what we would find, um, and to be honest, um, I hadn't prepared very well. The visit profoundly changed all three of us, and we left hoping that the very special work being done on the side of that mountain wouldn't be restricted to just Jasper. We returned in April 2012 with a slight, a slight of larger um, entourage, including my wife, Rima, my kids, Alyssa and Zachariah, my mother-in-law, just for the cooking, uh, Freya and John again, um, to film the final parts of the film that you're about to see. My hope, and the hope of all those who've worked on the film, is that the unique philosophies of Jasper Mountain Centre will be applied in other settings around Australia and around the world and that maltreated children can learn to perceive the world differently and that the perceptions about these children are also changed. Being a father myself, there's nothing more important to me than the future of my children um, and generations to come. And Jasper Mountain has taught me that there is no such thing as a lost cause and that every child has a future. On a personal level, it's taught me that what you give, you get back uh, much more. The film will run for about 95 minutes um, and it'll be followed by a brief questions and answers session um, which we'll conduct as soon as the film finishes. So thank you very much for your attention and I hope you enjoy Once Upon a Mountain. Thank you for all your hard work. 
To Melissa, Natalie and Bessie, your support, hard work and sacrifice has been very appreciated. Harris Abdullah, thank you for also giving of your time to help complete this film, as well as Ben Plunkett, who helped do a lot of face blurring. Um, Paul Ceccanelli, oh, I'm just trying to practice my Italian there, Paul, sorry. Your musical brilliance, Paul was our composer, your musical brilliance has added so much to this film. Thank you for all that you've done. Gregory and the Australian Childhood Trauma Group, thank you so much for introducing us to the philosophies of Jasper Mountain and for all the work that you do. And now, most importantly, Dave, Joyce and Judy, who unfortunately can't be here because someone has to run Jasper Mountain while they're here. Um, thank you for quite simply being the people that you are and doing the work that you do. Uh, we've all been blessed to know you and to work with you and, um, and we've been blessed to experience the Jasper Mountain Way. I'd now like to invite Dave and Joyce um, and Gregory from the Australian Child Trauma Group um, up to this stage. We're going to do a little bit of questions and answers. You'll have to bear with us while we get this uh, stage set up. But if uh, we could uh, get a round of applause for Dave and Joyce and Gregory. And I want to say that I grew up in a family where um, your good deeds were not to be talked about or obvious. They were to speak for themselves, and perhaps the film is the one way to do that. It's, it's difficult to see, uh, for Joyce and I, to see ourselves up on the big screen when this is our life. Uh, but I want to thank uh, Ruben and uh, his, his crew, uh, actually, I, I turned it to three musketeers rather than three students, uh, out of respect. And Rima and, and everyone's been a part of this, uh, and Gregory for originally um, saying it'd be great to have us come down to Australia. It's been, it's been a great run. We've been here for five years. This is the last time that we're scheduled to be here for the next uh, two days. And then, uh, and then we'll see. We hope to come back in the future and see amazing things happening for children in Australia. I just want to thank all of you for being here uh, and help us one child at a time to make a difference. I just wanted to ask what you do about succession planning. Obviously, it's your entire life, and it has been for 30 years, and so much of its success rotates around your heart and personality. How do you plan for that to go on forever? You've decided never to die. <laughs> uh, your concern is shared by my board of directors. And they have required me to have a uh, seven-year plan uh, presented to them. Uh, one of the uh, gentlemen that was in the, actually in the documentary, is a uh, Olympic uh, athlete, and he has joined us uh, just a few days before we came down on this trip. Uh, there are a couple other people uh, that you uh, saw in the documentary that are a different generation than Joyce and I, and they have been learning the way uh, for the future and will step in and assist. So we're very much working on succession. And actually, coming down here is a great opportunity. We've been gone a month and giving uh, the staff a chance to uh, do it on their own without us. And I encourage them not to call me with a crisis and to do the best they can. And I have not gotten a crisis call or- Because you don't have a cell phone. I was just about to say, you don't have a phone. <laughs> Your sister is correct. I refuse to have a cell phone. Dave asked if I wanted to retire, and I said, well, he wants to work till he's 70. I said, well, if I could at least get down to 40 hours a week, that would be helpful. <laughs> She's so demanding. <laughs> okay, we have another question. The documentary touched quickly on the fact that you find it much better to have people come and stay for a long period of time rather than come in and out. How long does the average person stay at Jasper Mountain? The uh, documentary is primarily about our most intensive program uh, and for a reason. We believe that if we can touch the hearts and souls of the most damaged kids, that we can do 
uh, a similar job with kids that have not gone through as much trauma. We have six programs at Jasper. We have 130 staff. Uh, we get a great deal of help. We have three psychiatrists, uh, 10 certified teachers. We have 20 uh, licensed therapists, uh, on and on and on. We get a lot of help. We have six different programs with length of stays uh, from three days to, at times, a couple years. But what happens these days is the kids will come in for an assessment. Uh, if they need more intensive treatment, we have a program like that. If they have the most, if they have the needs for the most intensive care, we are now the uh, functioning state hospital, psychiatric hospital for the state of Oregon. They closed theirs down because they found that we had kids that were getting better and they had kids that weren't. Uh, and so um, the length of stay in our uh, most intensive program in the castle is uh, 10 months to 12 months. Younger kids stay shorter periods of time because we, quite frankly, get to them quicker. We, we find in our own research that children that come in before the age of 10 have a 60% faster rate of recovery than the older kids. People ask me, well, why don't you work with teenagers? Now, obviously, they don't have one. Uh, <laughs> but our point is that uh, we want to invest all of our resources with the youngest kids possible. Our system of care, I don't think, is, is much different than Australia's, where much of the resources goes into teens because they're the ones that rip off your car, they're the ones that hurt you. Uh, we need to get to the younger kids, and that's where our resources go. Uh, my name's John. Uh, my question is, uh, first of all, congratulations. It's, it was outstanding to view and appreciate being here. Uh, clearly, you're people of great love, but do you have a um, the focus on the, uh, the, the hate that you must have for the people that have perpetrated this to the children? Uh, no, I don't think that we can, because uh, one of our messages to the children is that forgiveness is required to be a healthy human being. And actually, forgiveness and the research is the most powerful thing that you can do. Um, yes, it is difficult for all of us. Uh, it is particularly difficult for Joyce. Um, the, she is battered by the children emotionally and by what they've been through. Um, I've had 41 years of, of hearing all of these stories. I feel a little bit like an emergency room worker with the sight of blood. Uh, it's, it's something that I need to fix and work on. Um, so, uh, but I do not have that hatred for those that have hurt these kids because I've been in this business long enough to know that if you go back a generation, even two, even three, you will find other little abused kids that uh, are making very poor choices because somebody wasn't there for them uh, and didn't teach them empathy, which is what we have to do now. We have day students come into our uh, school from all the other school districts. They're happy to bring their kids to us. So. And our, they fit in, but right now we have in our program day, a day student who is the child of one of our former residents. So we get to see them you know, after they leave and their children. And our goal is to stop that generational child abuse now. And I would encourage all of you to do everything you can to do the same. We do not need other generations to go through what Alan has gone through. He has made it. Many have not. His brother has not made it. His brother is not functional today. And he was not as seriously wounded as Alan. But Alan got the help that he needed. So help us. If I may have a question and a comment um, as, a, as a carer. Uh, the comment is to the Zieglers, thank you for your inspiration. Thank you for the teaching. Uh, it's made an impact on our family, and thank you for that. The question is for Gregory. How long? How long to one here? Uh, I, I actually knew that question was going to come up, interesting enough, um, because we get asked it all the time in the last five years that Dave and Joyce and Judy have been coming down. People continue to ask about how long, and I've asked it myself about how do we create Jasper Mountain. Um, I think Dave, Joyce, and Judy and I have talked about a couple of things. One, it'd be wonderful to do it, but to try and do something that's been created over 30 years overnight uh, would be very difficult. I've created in an organic way this wonderful place called Jasper Mountain. 
Um, I'll get to the exact question in a moment. The thing I should say is that when you're actually on Jasper Mountain, there's a kind of ordinariness about what goes on. I don't mean that in a disparaging way, but what I mean is that people go about doing the business. It's a family. People just go about doing things. Uh, what Ruben and his team have captured is the beauty of what goes on, the extraordinariness of that, that certainly Dave, Joyce and Judy would not see. Um, but you see it through the eyes of the um, lens. Um, I think that's really important. In terms of Jasper down here, the thing I've learned and been involved with Jasper for the last five years is, is one of the most important things that happens at Jasper that I think we can do down here is the integration of all the services that they have. I think we still do it incredibly poorly uh, here in Australia, where we have uh, systems of mental health, um, whether it be uh, CAMs or other uh, mental health services, whether the Department of Education, Department of Human Services, who struggle to come together. We have children who might spend months and months before they get an assessment to determine well, what direction should we be moving in. Within Jasper Mountain, within a very short period of time, and a mean short period of time, the staff have determined the focus of the work. Now I know for those of you who are carers or may come out of residential houses, uh, you'd find that quite surprising, uh, that join very quickly all the staff team know this is the work, this is the direction we're moving in, but we don't have that. Would I like to pray to Jasper Mountain? Yes. Are we working on it? There is a group of us thinking about how we go about it. We're hoping Gina Reinhardt might give up maybe just a little bit of her, um, <laughs> her $20 billion to um, help us create one. But that's the reality of uh, the amount of money it would take to do it. But one other thing I'll say is I don't want anybody walking out here tonight and saying, well, wouldn't it be great if we could replicate what's happened far away? Um, we did this one day at a time, uh, and we invested our life in it. I would ask everybody in this room to do what you can in your own way. Uh, and as they say in India, uh, when the flower blooms, the bees come uninvited. For the first three years, we wouldn't let anybody know what we were doing. Uh, and you are seeing something tonight uh, out of the generosity and the skill of, of the uh, Ruben and Rima and, her team, and their team. Uh, but this, this is our life. We, we didn't start this to say, well, one day we'll be in Melbourne at a premiere. Uh, it is one day at a time, and please do everything you can in your way, and perhaps that will at some point bloom and the bees will come uninvited. At this point, uh, people ask me about funding. Uh, we do no fundraising. People come to us and we have enough money to do what we do because people see what we do and say, how can I help uh, with my pocketbook, with my time, with my energy? Time for maybe one or two more questions. I'm not sure if anyone else has got the mic. John, you got the mic. <laughs> uh, is, there's a question down here, John. Um, just a question about Justin, Jasper Mountain. Um, is there any spirituality involved in in the program, is, whether it be religion or meditation? Is that incorporated in Jasper Mountain? I, that's an excellent question. If if we don't touch their souls, we don't touch them. You heard that in several ways in the documentary. Um, yes, there is a spiritual base. We had a, uh, a Catholic nun that had taught in uh, graduate schools, all Catholic schools in the United States, and she came to work for us uh, just a few years before she retired. And before she left and retired, she came to me and she said, my whole life I have been a Catholic nun and I have taught in higher education. She said, I've never been to a more spiritual place than you have here. Um, our background is one of spirituality. Uh, you will find in uh, my very first book uh, that the last chapter is uh, raising children as a vehicle to uh, do your own spiritual work. Uh, that is the only, I think you're picking that up, that the only way that Joyce and I can do what we, we do is that this is our work. This is what makes a difference in our life, and it's a very spiritual thing. And we, we integrate that in everything. Uh, we have the, the system uh, early on was kind of nervous. Some of the administrators and, and attorneys were nervous at uh, some of the spiritual uh, approaches that, that we would offer kids. There is no particular denomination that we 
that we uh, present to the kids, but I am a student of the religions of the world and I teach them the commonality of truth and of uh, all the belief systems. And I want my kids to have a choice. And I will teach them that they need something, a spiritual core inside of them to take them into life, uh, to help them when things get tough. And I want that for my kids. I want them to be happy. I want them to set goals. I want them to have a spiritual belief system. I want them to have that spring within when everything dries up around them that they can count on and uh, be happy. If you get a hold of me, I'd be happy to give you the, the 50 ways that we integrate uh, the soul of the kids, including the gemstones that you saw. One of the gemstones is spiritual health, the understanding that you are a part of something greater than yourself. Uh, the research on that has been profound. That, that happy people have a sense that they are connected not only to others, but they're connected to something much broader, something much greater than themselves. So uh, feel free to get a hold of me with anything that I'm talking about tonight. I'd be happy to share because that is our job. The reason why we're sitting up here, the reason why we agreed to this documentary was not to be uh, up in lights in this beautiful theater. It was to share with you what we feel a need to do because the kids have allowed us to go into their lives for 30 years. Very few people have that blessing that Joyce and I and Judy have had, and we want to turn around and share that with anybody interested, uh, and we'd be happy to do so. Now, when Dave says, that doesn't, Sorry. that it doesn't feel like a blessing, but I just would like to mention also, it's very humbling to be here tonight. Um, it's um, remarkable that people from another country were interested in telling our story. Johnny and Elio and all the families. I just want to thank you for being here. you to get a hold of him, he means bring a tent, book a flight, they've got plenty of space, um, as you saw, he's happy to accept Aussies. <laughs> that is what you did. <laughs> okay, I think that's, uh, that's all we have time for tonight. Thank you so much for your attention, thank you so much for your support. Um, thank you. down in the aisles um, and hide for twilight and get uh, for free, but uh, otherwise we do need to clear out. Thank you very much.